Hello and welcome to the Nature Photography Show. In this video, I'm going to show you how to import your images into Lightroom Classic. Before we get started into how to import images into Lightroom Classic, I want to talk about a couple of things. First, Lightroom Classic does not in any way manage your files. It will only do what you tell it to do. So that's very important to remember. There's nothing about Lightroom that manages your photographs. So if this is the first time you've ever opened up Lightroom and you're just getting started into photography, make sure you have a file structure that you can understand, a file structure that makes sense to you. When we go through this, I will show you how I do my file structure, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it will work for you. That's just how it works for me. And that's what's important. I understand it. I keep it the same. That way I never lose my images and I never wonder, what did Lightroom do with them anyway? All right, so here we are in Lightroom. We're gonna first need to bring up the import dialog box. And there are four ways to do this. You can start by just inserting the card into the card reader and chances are it's gonna bring up the dialog box. You can also go to the library module and then lower left hand side, there's an import button. You can click that, go to file, import photos and video, or you can do the quick key option, which is command or control shift I. For the purposes of this video, we're just gonna click the button. And here we are in the import dialog box. And I wanna call out three things first before we get into the details. The left hand side, you'll see source. This is where your images currently reside, whether they're on a card, whether they're on a portable hard drive or hard drive on your computer, this is where they currently are. The upper portion of the screen, this is what you want Lightroom to do with the images themselves. Then on the right hand side, I'm gonna scroll down to destination. This is where you want the images to go. This is why it's important to know your file structure before you get started, or at least have an understanding of your file structure. So real quick, where the images currently are, what you want them to do, and where you want them to go. Now we can get into some details. So take a look over here at source. The first option here is eject after import. That just means it will eject the card wherever you happen to have the images once you hit the import button. This is your file systems, however you want to see them. I choose to drill down. I've got a Nikon Z9. I was in Death Valley. I loaded some raw files onto a card so that we can see what this looks like. So I'm gonna click that. All right, so here are the images. You'll notice they're all checked. And what that means is that Lightroom has never seen these before and that it's going to bring them in. You have an option to, over here on the right, you can see it, don't import select duplicates. This would mean that if, for example, you had a multiple day shoot and you got home one night and you downloaded all your images, you went to shoot the next day and you got back and you downloaded the images again, you have the option of checking don't import select duplicates. So it will not re-import files that you've already imported. It just helps clean things up a little bit. You can also change the size of the thumbnails if you want. You can look at individual files and you can scroll through everything and see if there's something you don't want. Like for example, what if I don't want this hand? Now just for reference, I use hand in front of the lens to designate these are all focus stacked images. So I'll have four images that will need to go together later, but I use my hand as something quick to tell me in post-processing that I'm going to do something with these. So for example, we don't want this last hand for whatever reason. So we hit the check and now it will not import those. Now, what do we want Lightroom to do with these images? We have four options here, but two of them are grayed out and we'll go over those uh, after I go over the first two. The first one, and it defaults to this one, which is copy. What this means, it will leave the images where they are at the source. It will make copies of them and put the copies of those files where you want them to go in the destination. Copy as DNG means that it will copy them and convert them to DNG, which is an Adobe RAW file. 
I personally always just copy them so that I keep the camera's native raw file and not copy them into Adobe. The two other options that are grayed out, they're grayed out because I'm using a card and a card reader and it doesn't want us to make a mistake. So move means that it will move the files from where they currently are to where they're going to be. This means it doesn't make a copy and it means if, for example, something happens in that move, you could lose those images. Then you have add, which means it will leave the files where they currently reside and you can add them to the catalog. Now this is important if you're one of those people that like to take the images off the card and put them in a file system and structure that you understand. If that's the way you like to do that, then you can keep doing that. You just need to tell Lightroom where those images are and to add them to the catalog, which means it will leave them where they are and it will add the information to the catalog itself. All right. Now on the right hand side, there is a lot of information here and we're going to go through these. First, you're going to look at file handling. You have an option to build previews. If you want to speed Lightroom up a little bit, then you can do one-to-one -one previews, which means when you import all of these, it will take a while to get the one-to-one -one previews built, but once you have them built, it allows you to manipulate the images a little bit faster, to cycle through them faster. It just makes it a little bit better. You just have to get up and go get a drink or a sandwich or something while you're letting it build those previews. And you can still work while it's building the previews. Just keep in mind it might bog down just a little bit. And then we've talked about this one already a little bit, the don't import selected or suspected duplicates. This is just in case, like I mentioned before, where you're having duplicates and you don't want to keep re-importing the same files over and over and over again. That would be horrible, actually. And then you have an option here to make a second copy too. If you like to make copies of copies of copies, then here you can say, make me a second copy to a new location, like a portable hard drive, uh, just any other hard drive at all. This is where you would be able to do that. And then you want to be able to add to collection. I use collections and collection sets. Some people don't, but I typically don't do this and I choose to do it a different way, but you can absolutely go ahead and add it to a collection as you're importing. And as you can see, I, I have landscape option here. You've got quick collection, but we're going to uncheck that. Now here is where you can file rename. If you want to rename every file as it comes in, I just leave it whatever the camera decides is the right file number. But again, you can rename the file. You have all kinds of options, all these different ways of doing it, your date, your file name. You've got extensions. You can leave it as is, or you can change those uppercase, lowercase. Now during import, you can apply different settings. Like here's the development setting. If you have presets in your Lightroom, you can choose to add those presets to every single image that you import. I don't like that myself because every image is not the same. So even though all of these would be landscape, I might not want to apply my landscape preset to all of these images. Then you have metadata. This is where you can create presets. Like I have one for copyright so that on import that it would add the copyright information to every single image but this is completely up to you. You can edit presets and here you can see all of the different information that you can request to be added to every single image. And then you can hit done and save as, save changes. We're gonna say cancel here or don't save because I have one built for just the uh, copyrights which I sometimes remember to apply. Then if you have keywords, that you want to add to everything. Like here, since all of these came from Death Valley, I can add Death Valley if I want, and California, and all kinds of other stuff, landscapes, whatever you want to add keyword-wise, you can do that here on import. I'm gonna leave that off. For your destination, we've talked about this is where you want them to go. And the way that I have mine structured, so I've got the pictures, I've got the Lightroom catalog, 2023 photographic library. And then here I've got it broken out by landscapes and location. 
So these are going to go into Death Valley, but actually that's my normal structure for the training. I've got my own training thing here. So catalog, images, landscapes, Death Valley. So just to do a quick recap here, where they are, what you want Lightroom to do with them, and where you want them to go. And here you can see that I'm going to copy them, which is leave the images where they are, make copies of them, and put them in this folder called Death Valley. Now we're going to import. If we're done, and we're going to look through, make sure we're happy with everything we've got, and we're good, and we're going to just say import. In the upper left-hand side, you will have two operations in progress. One will be the importing, and the other will be building the smart previews we talked about. As far as where the images are, if you look to the left-hand side under Folders, click the caret, and click wherever you happen to have them on your hard drive. And I've got them under Macintosh, under Images, Landscapes, Death Valley. Now, if you get here and there's only one folder and you don't know what happened, you can go to, like this example, it will show up, Show Parent Folder, and then it will show what is above that. So now you can see the entire file structure of how you have it set up. It can be confusing if you only have one folder and you knew that you had more. So again, just right click and then there's an option to show parent folder and it'll show the next level up. You only have to do that once and then anything under Lightroom Training Catalog, Images, Landscapes, any of those, it will show everything below that. And that is how you import images into Lightroom Classic. If you found something useful in the video, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, leave comments below, and as always, grab your camera, get off the couch, escape, explore, and create.